Chapter 11 of The Bear Family at Home. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jay Salem, Las Vegas, Nevada. The Bear Family at Home by Curtis Wilbur. The Clubfoot Bear That Would Not Mind His Papa. A Great Smash Up. After the little clubfoot bear that would not mind his papa had had his nose split, had lost an ear, had nearly drowned three times, and all of the toes had been cut off one foot, the papa bear thought he had better move away to some place where there were not so many things to hurt little bears. So he moved a long, long way to a place where there was a great coal mine. The men would go to the coal the ground and dig coal from way under the ground. The coal was to be burned in stoves to keep little boys and girls warm in the wintertime, for they do not sleep all winter as little bears do. The coal was used also to cook what the little boys and girls and their papas and their mamas ate, bread and meat and pies and cakes and everything nice. The coal was used to make the railway monsters go back and forth on the tracks, hauling men and circus trains and freight trains. A railway monster could not go toot-toot or choo-choo-choo, move or do anything without coal or coal oil. The little clubfoot bear that would not mind his papa thought that the coal mine was very fine. He liked to watch the men as they went down into the ground in cages or elevators and lamps hang with their little coffee pot like lamps hanging in front of their caps to show them where to go in the dark. You see that it was always dark way down in the mine. He liked to watch the engine as it went puff, puff, puff. But this engine did not move back and forth like a locomotive. It was called a stationary engine because it stood in one place. And how do you suppose it moved the men? One part of the engine was called a drum, because it was round like a drum, and on this was a great steel rope like a thread on a great spool. As the drum, or spool, turned around and round, the rope would be wound up or unwound, and the rope went up over a great wheel, and then hung down in the hole in the cage with the men in it was on the end of the rope, and as the rope unwound, the cage went down into the hole in the ground, and as it wound up, the cage came up to the top of the ground. But the men had a foot of bear that would stop in time, or the men and the cage would all be wound around the drum and smashed and killed. Now the papa bear was very careful to tell the little bear never, never to touch the engine or anything about it. But one day, the little club-footed bear that would not mind his papa went into the engine room when everyone else had gone away to dinner. The engineer had just stepped out. It was a cold day, and the little bear enjoyed the warm room. The machinery was all so bright, some looked like gold, and some looked like silver, and some parts were a beautiful bright red, and others were a pretty green. After the little bear that would not mind his papa had been there for a while, he saw a sort of handle. And before he stopped to think, he reached up and gave it a strong pull to see if it would move. And what do you think happened? The engine went puff, puff, puff. The wheels went around, frightened the little clock, and the drums commenced to wind the rope up very, very fast. My, how frightened the little clubfoot bear was. He ran away as fast as he could run, but he was scarcely out of the door before the cage came to the top of the ground. But there was no one to stop the engine, and so the cage went on up to the wheel. And there was a great crash, and down came the wheel and cage, and on and on to the great drum. And then there was the greatest tearing and smashing and breaking you ever heard. Bang! Bang! Smash! Smash! Crack! Crack! Crash! Crash! And then the noise stopped, for the beautiful engine was broken all to pieces. And the little clubfoot bear that would not mind his papa ran and ran. And he didn't go home that night nor the next night, for he was ashamed to meet his papa. 
the beautiful in- all the time he was saying oh why didn't i mind my papa the beautiful engine is all smashed and the poor little donkeys that haul away the coal cars away down in the mine will starve to death because no one can take them anything to eat but finally the little club foot bear that would not mind his papa went home he found his papa feeling very sad because he thought his little cub was killed the papa kissed him and gave him a great bear hug but he felt very sorry and so did the little cub when the papa bear had finished telling his story to the little cub the little bear said very sweetly good night papa dear i am always going to do just what you tell me to do and papa bear said i hope so little cub that night the little cub bear got up in his sleep and ran as fast as he could but he saw papa who was sleeping there in the cave the papa bear saw that he had been running in his sleep so he took him and put him back in his bed he must have been dreaming can you guess what he was dreaming about the next morning after the animals had their breakfast the little cub bear told them that the giraffe had said there was a fine cave back of the one where the bears lived so the animals all agreed that they would do the best they could and all worked together to see if they could not succeed in making a hole large enough for all the animals to get through into the next cave for you remember that the hole was only large enough for the long-necked giraffe to get his head through they went to work to make the hole larger the mule kicked down rocks the goat butted down more rocks the monkey the bears the mama bear the papa bear suzy bear the circus bear and the little that night, the cub bear all carried the rocks out of the cave the elephant helped as well as he could with his trunk but the mouth of the cave was so small that he could not get in to work they all worked until they were tired but they could not get through into the cave although the hole was made much larger that night before they went to sleep the little cub bear teased his papa for a story about the little club foot bear that would not mind his papa but the papa bear was so tired that he asked if some of the animals would not be willing to tell little cub bear a story the parrot said that she had heard a story told by the lion about his most narrow escape and that she would be willing to tell the story of her most narrow escape if the little cub bear would promise not to ask his papa for another story that night of course the little cub bear promised and so the parrot told the end of chapter 11 chapter 12 of the bear family at home this is a librivox recording all LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Betsy Walker, Santa Fe, New Mexico. The Bear Family at Home by Curtis Wilbur. The Parrot's Most Narrow Escape. Well, said the parrot, I lived in South America where there were many beautiful trees and many strange animals and some of the largest snakes in the whole world. The very largest snake that lives there is called the boa constrictor. He is so large that he can swallow a deer whole. And, of course, a poor little parrot or a chicken or a rabbit would not make a meal for him. It would hardly make a dessert. When seated on the end of a long limb, nearly asleep, when suddenly I looked up and saw a man pointing a gun at me and all ready to shoot me. I was so frightened that I could not move, and I expected him to shoot any minute. But I thought that before I was killed, I would take one last look at the blue sky that I was never to see again. And what do you think I saw? A great snake, a boa constrictor, coiled around the limb above me and looking at me as though he wanted to eat me. I was more frightened than ever. It seemed that his look made me weak, sick, and dizzy. Before I could move, the snake darted at me like a flash, seized me, and began to swallow me. 
In a moment, I was just like poor Jonah, only I was inside a snake instead of a whale. Everything was dark, and I could not think, except that I knew I in a minute. Suddenly, I heard a great bang, bang, and the old snake began to squirm and twist. Then, in a moment, I felt something cut through the snake, and I was out in the bright sunshine, and the sun almost blinded my eyes. You see, the man had shot the snake instead of shooting me, as he had intended. He took me out and put me in a bag that he had with him. Then he sent me to the circus, and I was there until the wreck of the train. There I learned to talk like the men. I could say, Polly wants a cracker. Come right in, ladies and gentlemen, and many other things. I learned to sneeze like a man, kerchoo-oo-oo, kerchoo-oo-oo, and to snore like a man, ah hoo ah hoo ah hoo and to cough, <coughs> and to end, I learned to rock so that I could call a dog, <whistles> and to cluck so that I could make the horses go, and I learned to ride on a dog's back without sticking my claws in so that it hurt him. But that is all my story. My, said the little cub bear, what a narrow escape. We should never lose hope. I'm glad that you escaped. After the parrot had finished the story, the little cub bear went to sleep. When he was sound asleep, he suddenly began to breathe hard, as though he could not get enough air, and he twisted around and seemed to be smothering. Soon, though, he breathed a great deep breath, and then he was still and quiet. I think that he must have been dreaming. Can you guess what he was dreaming about? The little cub bear slept very late next morning, and when the animals would come, there, all of the animals were up and were talking about the cave, and wondering whether any more of the animals would come that day. While the animals were talking, they heard two great noises, bang, bang, and they knew that the beaver was telling them that some animal was coming. The cub bear rushed to the mouth of the cave to see who it was, and he said, I see two rats coming up the path. They are perfectly white. With the two rats, is a rat that is bigger than both of them. It has beautiful fur. Just then, the cub bear looked up at the owl to see why the owl did not say, Hoo, hoo! And just as he looked, he saw the old owl start from his perch with a great fluttering of wings and pounce like a flash down on the rats. And he caught one of the white rats in his claws and flew back to his perch. And there he began to eat this poor little white wife. The little but the other white rat and the muskrat came into the cave. The little cub bear said very politely, Come in, Mr. Rat. But the little white rat was trembling so that he couldn't say a thing. And the cub bear said, I am very glad I am not a little rat to be eaten up by a wicked old owl. But the circus bear said, You know that owls eat rats and mice and little birds and things of that kind. But this owl is a very good, kind owl, and I am surprised that he would harm one of the white rats from the circus. But I guess he is very hungry, because he has been sitting up there a long while with nothing to eat. Then the cub bear said, We are going to try to build a house big enough for all the animals, so if they come to see us, we will have a place for them to stay. We think there is a large cave, large enough for us all back of this cave, very good to me. Will you help us? Then the muskrat said, I should be very glad to help you if I can, because your brother was very good to me when we were in the circus. And the little cub bear said, What can you do? And the muskrat said, I can climb through this round hole here and see what there is in there. So, he scampered through the hole where the giraffe had looked and was gone a long, long while. And they all waited and wondered why he didn't come back. Finally, the muskrat did come back, but he was all wet, and all the animals wondered why. The little cub bear said, What did you find? The muskrat said, I found the most beautiful cave in the whole world. 
It has a level, smooth floor and is nice and clean. And there are beautiful columns that come down from the roof to the floor of the little stream of clear like pillars in a great palace. And away back in the back part of the cave, there is a beautiful stream of clear, cold water. I had a fine swim in it. This cave is large enough for all the animals in the circus. There is one place back in the cave that is big enough for all the circus tents of the circus we used to be in. And the circus bear said, My, that is grand, because he knew how large the tents were. And the little cub bear said, My, that is grand, because his brother had said the same thing, and he knew it must be so. Then the animals began to plan how they would get into this cave. Finally, they all agreed that if they could make the opening of the den large enough for the elephant to get in, and if the rhinoceros should come with his great horn, and some more of the animals would come, that they surely could get into this cave. And all the bears... So that night, the elephant worked as hard as he could with his tusks and his trunk, and all the bears worked carrying out rock and stones and digging out roots with their claws. And the monkey scampered around and carried out small rocks and pulled out small roots and helped some. But he kept pulling the elephant's tail every once in a while and was more bother than he was help. Just like some boys that you know. But finally, they got the mouth of the den large enough so the elephant could come in. He came in and sat down, and then there was hardly room enough for any other animal. The poor little cub bear and the circus bear were squeezed up tight against the wall, and Papa and Mama bear had to get way back in the back part of the cave, and the monkey had to hang to a root way up on the top of the cave. But by turning around slowly, the elephant found that he could use his tusks and trunk to move some of the rocks. They all went into the cave were tired and were nearly through into the cave and had made the room so much larger that they all had room to sit down and talk. The next morning early, the little cub bear heard the bang-bang of the beaver's tail and rushed to the mouth of the cave, and there he saw a very large animal with two horns on the end of his nose and a funny-looking skin, hard and horny. He knew at once that the animal was the rhinoceros the lion had told about the night before. The owl said, Hoo, hoo, and the animal answered with a terrible snort and roar. Then the rhinoceros came to the mouth of the cave, and the little bear said, I am very glad that you came, because we are trying to build a house that will be large enough to hold all of the animals that used to live in the circus. And the giraffe tells us that there is a large cave back of this cave, and if we can only break through, we will have a house that when we were in the circus. Then the rhinoceros said, What can I do? For I would like to help. Your brother was very good to me when we were in the circus, and I would be very glad to do anything that I can. The little cub bear said, I think that with that great horn of yours, you could help to tear out some of the dirt and rocks, and the monkeys and the bears could then carry them out. Perhaps the elephant would be hitched to the chariot, and we could carry out some of the dirt and rocks in it. The rhinoceros said that he would be very glad to do this. That night, after the animals were through with their work, the little cub bear, who was the greatest fellow for stories that you ever saw, began to tease his papa for another story about the little clubfoot bear that would not mind his papa. Finally, the papa bear said that he would tell a story if the little cub bear would promise to go right to bed as soon as he was the story of. Of course, the little cub bear said that he would, so Papa Bear told him the story of End of Chapter 12